You are an advantage. You are a blessing of happiness. Yes, we agree. But you are also the source of Wu. You gave little contribution to this great kingdom, which thou now has got. Now you have already conquered this kingdom through your influence. Who made thee rich? Actually, man made you rich. You do not make man rich, but man made you rich. Hello students, I am Anil, Assistant Professor of English, Vidyash from First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. In this session, we are going to look at a poem titled Average by George Herbert, prescribed for the students of BBA first semester. Beginning the session, we will go through the poet. George Herbert is a 17th century English poet. He was the contemporary of Shakespeare and Milton. Always elegant and passionate. His works are always elegant and passionate. He is known as a poet of devotional verse. Devotional that is related with religion, devotion, etc. His poems focus on religious experience. So how a man goes through spiritual journey. It is reflected in that sense. Some of his most well-known poems are The Altar and Easter Wings. In addition to writing in English, Herbert also wrote poems in Latin language. Along with English, he wrote many poems in Latin language as well. His works were praised as an attempt to express the indescribable complexities of spiritual life. So when you read his work, when you read his poetry or prose, they were praised as an attempt to express the indescribable complexities of spiritual life. In spiritual lives, there are certain things which cannot be described very easily. So when you read his works, you go through easily understanding such topics. What is the theme in this poem? Average is a poem composed by George Herbert, who is a metaphysical poet. It is about money. Here, money means gold. The theme is the human beings running behind money. Here, money is represented by gold. When this man wrote this poem, golden coins were in use. So he uses that in terms of money, in terms of greed and expresses his thoughts and human nature. Now coming to the poem, it's a sonnet. In the first quarter, he says like this, money you bane of bliss and source of woo. So these are all old English. So here he says money thou, you are Bane of bliss. You are an advantage. You are a blessing of happiness. Yes, we agree. But you are also the source of woo. When comes thou that thou art so fresh and fine? He acts in the second sentence, in the second line of the first quadrant. Whence comes thou that thou art so fresh and fine? When you come, when did you come? When you are so fresh and fine. That means he is questioning the origin of money. I know thy parentage is base and low. And then he says, I know your parentage. That means your origin is very base and low. You are not of high birth. You may give happiness to people, but you are source of unhappiness. And when you come to people, I know how you come. Not in a very good manner. And I know your parentage is base and low. Man found thee poor and dirt in a mine. So where did man find you? Now he is talking about the origin of gold. Where did man find you? He found the poor and dirt in a mine. You are very poor. It is like ore. When people dig out gold, it is not available in the raw form. The raw form of gold is the golden ore. So they found you in dirt. And when they found you, you were already poor. And then what happens? We will see in the second quatrain. Surely thou didn't so little contribute. Now he says, surely you didst so little contribute. You gave only little contribution. How? To this great kingdom. He is talking about UK. You gave little contribution to this great kingdom, which thou now has got. Now you have already conquered this kingdom through your influence. That he was fine when thou wert destitute. 
So this kingdom was already fine when you were a destitute. When you did not have place, the kingdom was good. To dig thee out of thy dark cave and grot. So when they dug you out, until you are dug out of the mines, everything was fine. That is what he says in the second quatrain. Third quatrain, he says, Then forcing thee by fire, he made thee bright. Now when people dug you out of that mine you are so dirty you are not looking good you were already destitute then forcing thee by fire so the poet expresses how the gold is made to shine he made thee bright who is this he man made you bright nay thou hast got the face of man now what happens now you have got the face of man now you have his appearance now people have started valuing gold for we have with our stamp and seal transferred our right so why do you have so much of power now because with all our hard work we have given all our identity by giving our stamp and seal we gave our respect our dignity to gold we brought you from the dirt then we forced you with fire we made you bright and with stamp and seal we transferred our right no people started respecting you more than they respected each other. Thou art the man and the man but draws to thee. Now you are the man. Now you have all the value. People have started to respect you. Now you are the man and man but draws to thee. But what is man to you, money? He is dirt. He is a useless thing to you. You have got all the value. You are now powerful. And man has lost all his power. And therefore, he is nothing to you. He is like dirt. Man calleth thee his wealth. But what does man call you? He calls you his wealth. Who made thee rich? Actually, man made you rich. You do not make man rich. But man made you rich. And while he digs out you, falls in the ditch. And finally, in the couplet, the poet says, when man brings gold out of that mine, what happens? He digs you out. He digs gold from the ditch, from the pit. And you can imagine when you want to bring something out of the ditch, you have to enter in. And he gives a beautiful picture, says when he digs, out you, uh, digs you out, he falls in the ditch. The man goes into the ditch. You come out and the man goes in. Therefore, reversing the value of the man with that of gold. So this is how he explains beautifully how greed has made man lose his identity and respect. And how gold has gained all the respect and dignity of the society. And finally, in search of gold, in search of money, out of his greed, man falls in the ditch while gold takes all the credit. So this is how the poet explains greed of human beings and brings the topic of money in terms of gold. I hope you understood the sonnet. This is a Shakespearean type of sonnet where you have three quatrains and a couplet. Summarizing the sonnet, George Herbert, he wonderfully explains how money got its birth, whether it was of high birth or low birth, now you understood that money was made with all that is base and low. But what happened with man's greed? He gave all the shining to it. He forged it with fire and gave all the brightness. But what happened later? Then it became the face of man. Man lost his own face. And people started running behind money, which is represented by gold. So he says, gold is both a bliss of happiness, a blessings of happiness, and also a source of unhappiness. And when gold is brought out of the ore, people gave all their identity to gold with seals and stamps. They transferred their identity, dignity to that of gold. And then he lost his value and people started running behind gold. And finally, gold is brought out of 
the mines and caves and man falls in his own ditch in search of gold out of green. Therefore, the title, Avarice. I hope you understood this sonnet. We shall meet in the next class. Thank you.